So we decided to build a pool in our backyard. And one of the reasons why we bought this house is the lot size is over a quarter of an acre. And with that much land, a pool would fit nicely with lots of room. So our first challenge for this backyard is the berm, or slope. We needed to remove this slope to give us about nine more feet of depth so our pool would fit without it being too close to our house. So after adding plants and irrigation to the top retaining wall, we began to remove the slope. Now this was done all by hand and took two weeks to get it finished. Next, we needed to build a small retaining wall. This will keep the dirt from falling into the pool, and it will look the same as the other retaining wall. So we'll need some access to the backyard for the excavator. So once the excavator got to the backyard, it began digging for the footing. So the technique is to remove some more dirt, maybe another four or five inches from the back, then afterwards, come back and dig about a six inch trench that runs the entire span of the retaining wall. It will be six inches deep and two feet wide, which is plenty of room for the rebarb. The rebarb is placed in the trench to provide added strength for the concrete footing. Okay, we're all done with the excavator. So after having the footing dug with a machine, they added rebarb and then concrete. And here's the rebarb they installed that runs about 75 feet. The concrete mixer would not fit in our backyard. So they attached a long hose and just pumped it in. So the company that we used to build our retaining wall is Silverstone Contracting Incorporated and the owner is Corey Westover. His company is in Las Vegas. We are not endorsing any company. However, Corey and his crew did a great job. And if you live in Las Vegas and you need a retaining wall, give Corey a call for a free estimate. We'll put his contact information in the description below. So after the concrete is poured, they lay the first set of bricks into the wet concrete. When setting the first layer of bricks, it's very important to get them level as possible. If that first set of bricks is not level, then the rest of the wall will not be level. It was really fun watching these masonaries work. It's almost like an art form. So after they get that first layer of bricks set in the concrete, they then start with the corners of the wall. They're gonna start with the right side, that corner first, and they're gonna build it up all the way to the fourth layer. Then they're gonna to go to the left side of the wall and do the same thing, build it up to the fourth layer. This was day one. So once the corners were done, they'll let that dry overnight and come back and finish the wall the next day. So between the first and second layer of bricks, they drilled holes and added PVC pipe. And they spaced these about eight or nine feet apart. These holes are designed for drainage for the back of the wall. And remember to hit subscribe to keep this channel alive.
Okay, this is day two. And they're starting the second layer of bricks. And if you look closely, you can see those holes where the PVC pipe is. Like I said, that's for the drainage. And now we're on to the third layer of bricks. The wall is starting to take shape and it looks really good. And this wall will match the back walls. Probably look even better. Okay, now only a couple more bricks and we're done. Looks great. Now to waterproof this wall, they coat the back of the wall with a black tar. They also added a plastic bib that ran the span of the wall. And then they placed rocks on top of that bib. This allows for drainage. Then after they left, I took my shovel and just backfilled the wall. I had a lot of dirt from that slope that I could put into the backfill. This took about two days, mainly because it was very hot. After waterproofing and backfilling the wall, we added some nice decorative plants and irrigation. Then we added rocks that matched the rest of our landscaping. And the rock we used is 3 quarters Vista Gold. This process took one day to complete. Our goal was to get the landscaping done on both retaining walls. The last thing we wanted to do was do landscaping after the pool was installed. It would have been messy and we didn't want to mess up our pool deck. Now we're all done and we are ready for the pool install. The first thing to do is to draw the pool on the ground. They use spray paint. Our pool is 36 feet long by 12 feet wide and five and a half feet deep. And let the digging begin. So one of the big concerns in Las Vegas when digging for a pool is will you hit caliche or will you not hit it? Well, the first two feet of the dig went well. But after two feet, we hit caliche. And we hit a lot of it. And that would mean we need a special tool to break that up. During the dig, they added metal rebarb and some wood planks. This gave them the form to where they would dig. At this point is when they realize they hit Kalichi. Oh! And it could go no further as far as depth goes. <laughs> now this dig took four days. And mainly because of the Kalichi. Which is a very hard soil. And matter of fact, it broke this machine not once, but twice. <laughs> so after breaking the first machine, they brought out a smaller machine. And the bit they used to break up the caliche is much smaller on this machine. So it took much longer to remove the caliche. And anytime you have a pool dig in Las Vegas, 
you are warned that there will be an extra charge for caliche removal. And the company we used charged $135 an hour for a total of two hours. And by the way, the company we used to build our pool is Laguna. There'll be a link in the description below with Laguna's contact information. And remember, this is a Las Vegas company. So once the cleach is broken up, you can remove it with the excavator. The next day, they fixed the other machine so they can go ahead and use it again. But once again, my caliche broke the machine. It didn't really break the machine, it just snapped off half of the bit that breaks up the caliche. So they were able to use that bit, it just didn't go very far into the ground. Only half the depth. But it worked well and it worked fast. By the fourth day, it went by really quick. Things move fast. And remember guys, if you like these videos, give a thumbs up and share it. If you love them, hit subscribe. It's free. We dug down to six and a half feet deep at the deepest point. Our pool is going to be five and a half feet deep. And the excavation is done. Now it's time for plumbing. So first thing is they delivered all the PVC pipe. Then with spray paint, they marked the locations of the pipes. Next is the plumbing for the pool. The first thing to install is the actuator. The three main features for our pool is an 8 foot sheer waterfall, a bubbler, and an in-ground floor cleaning system. From what I can see, most of the plumbing, if not all of the plumbing, goes through the actuator. So this is the first time I've actually seen this being done. What they do is they heat the PVC pipe up with a blowtorch. And once it's hot enough, it becomes like spaghetti. And you can shape it or mold it any way you want to. And once it's in the shape you desire, pour water on top of it to harden it back up. So we have a bunch of complicated PVC pipes running everywhere. I do not pretend to understand how this all works, but it looks amazing. And I have a ton of respect for these plumbers. They did a great job. So once the actuator was installed, they began running PVC pipes throughout the pool. Like I said before, all these PVC pipes connect to the actuator. And this is the skimmer install. Once they're finished laying the pipes, they cover them with sand. I'm not really sure why, but that's what they do.
And here's that blowtorch again. I find it pretty cool. Because you want to get it hot enough, but you don't want to burn the material. And this connection here is the drain for the bottom of the pool. And I notice with all these connections for these drains, they make sure it's level. and more sand to cover the pipes with. So the plumber on the left, it looks like he is connecting the pipes for the waterfall. This pipe also connects to the bubbler. It's on the same pump. Okay, the plumbing for the pool is all done. All pipes are covered with sand, and all the PVC pipes are capped on top. The pool equipment will be on the side of our house. They had to bring a machine in to dig the trench for the piping. And they hit an irrigation line, as you can see all the water is going everywhere. So they brought in this smaller excavator to dig a trench from the pool all the way to the pool equipment, which is on the side of the house. The trench had to be wide enough to allow for six PVC pipes to be laid down flat. Here's where the pool equipment is on the side of the house. And those six PVC pipes run to the pool. All right, everybody, we're done here with part one of our pool build. Stay tuned for part two. Part two will have the rebarb, electrical, and the gun night spray. And once again, I want to thank you guys for watching. And remember, if you like these videos, give a thumbs up and share it. If you love them, hit subscribe. It's free.